In the past, we've approximated the area under a curve, or an integral, by using rectangles. The trapezoid rule approximates that area using trapezoids instead. Let's approximate this integral that represents the area under this curve from 2 to 12. Let's approximate that area using five trapezoids. First, I'm going to divide my entire interval from 2 to 12 into five pieces, each of length 2. I got the length 2 because I just divided my the width of my entire interval from 2 to 12, it has width 10, and I divide that by the five trapezoids to get 2 as the width of each subinterval that I'm going to build a trapezoid on. I'll call that width delta x. So far, this should look very similar to what we did when we approximated area with rectangles. But here's where it gets a little different. Instead of using the left endpoint, right endpoint, or the midpoint to find the height of a rectangle, we're going to use the left endpoint and the right endpoint to build a trapezoid. Now, that trapezoid kind of looks like a lot like a rectangle, but the next one will not look much like a rectangle at all. That there is a trapezoid. Here's the next trapezoid, the next one, and the fifth one. Three of these trapezoids follow the curve very closely, but these two trapezoids kind of miss, miss a lot. Of course, if we use more trapezoids, we'd have a more accurate approximation. So the idea here, as you can probably guess, is that we're going to approximate the value of this integral by the area of the trapezoids, all added up. So let's figure out the area of each trapezoid. If I draw a trapezoid like this and call its base, bases b1 and b2 and its height h, then the area is given by the average of the two bases, 1 half b1 plus b2, times the height. I won't prove this formula here, but you can work it out by cutting up the trapezoid into a rectangle and two triangles or by fitting two trapezoids together to make a parallelogram. Now, our trapezoids are kind of turned sideways, like this. So we'll think of this as our b1, this is our b2, and this distance right here is our h for our area formula. But hang on, we already have another name for h. h is just delta x, the width of our subintervals. And b1 and b2 are given by our function's values at certain x's. Like for the first trapezoid, its function's value at 2 and the function's value at 4. So if I call these numbers like x0, x1, all the way through x5, since they're five rectangles, then the area of trapezoid 1 is going to be given by delta x, that's the height, times 1 half f of x0 plus f of x1. And the area of trapezoid 2 is going to be given by delta x, that's the height, the sideways height, times 1 half f of x1 plus f of x2. I can write a similar formula for each of my five trapezoids. If I add these all up and pull out the 1 half delta x, then I get 1 half delta x times f of x naught plus f of x1 plus f of x1 again plus f of x2 plus f of x2 again, and so on. Notice that everything gets repeated twice except for f of x0 at the beginning and f of x5 at the end. Let me grab a little more space. And now I can rewrite my formula for the total area of all trapezoids as 1 half delta x times f of x naught plus twice f of x1, and so on, ending with a single f of x5. Going back to the numbers for this problem, delta x is 2, 
x naught is 2, x1 is 4, and so on, and my x5 is 12. I'm getting these numbers because these are the endpoints of each of my subintervals x0, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. Now I can use my graph, or more accurately, my table of values, to fill in the values of f at each of these x values. And using a calculator or maybe a spreadsheet, I can compute that sum, which works out to 38.73. So this is my approximation of my integral that I'm trying to calculate. And this is our first example of the trapezoid rule. So in the example we just did, we approximated an integral in terms of the areas of five trapezoids. And the formula for that was 1 half times delta x times f of x naught plus 2 f of x1 and so on up through 2 of f of x4 plus f of x5. Here, the delta x was the width of a subinterval. If the integral was from a to b, for us it was from 2 to 12, we could find that width delta x as b minus a over the number of subintervals. And each of these x values were endpoints of subintervals. This x naught was on the far left. So in other words, x0 was a, and this x5 was on the far right, so x5 was b. More generally, if we want to use n trapezoids, then we use subintervals of width b minus a over n, and we approximate our integral using the similar formula. Again, delta x represents the width of a subinterval, and these xi's are the endpoints of the subintervals. Notice that we have twice a two, number 2 multiplied by each of these terms except for the very first one and the very last one. Let's use the trapezoid rule to approximate the integral of cosine x between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 using four trapezoids. Since I want to use four trapezoids, I'm going to approximate my integral using this formula. Here, delta x is going to be the width of my subinterval, which is pi over 4, and the x sub i's are going to be the endpoints of my subintervals. So I start with x0 is pi over 2, I end with x4, which is 3 pi over 2, and my other x I's just go pi over 4 over each time. I'll plug all this into my formula, and then remembering that my f is really cosine of x, I can rewrite this and evaluate cosine and simplify, which gives me an answer of negative 1.896. That's not too far off from the actual cosine value of the integral, which works out to negative 2. In this video, we used the trapezoid rule to evaluate integrals. In other words, we approximated with trapezoids.